are cupcakes over um, on the table there, and we will not be offended if you keep on eating or if you decide to go over and get a cupcake, because we're going to just get going with the program tonight. And you don't want to miss the rest of the good food. So we will try not to judge you. I can't promise, but I'll try. So welcome to Camp Susquehanna's 75th anniversary. My name is, if you don't know me, my name is Ann Swift. And guess what? If you do know me, it's still Ann Swift. Funny how that works. So 75th anniversary, um, even having, even having um, that kind of a milestone, I think, is a mercy from God. Um, one, because of what it represents, but two, I think we need these milestones and that God puts them in our lives to remember. Just for example, when we had prayer before we ate tonight, well, we were thanking God for all those blessings. We could very well do it when we get dressed every day, like, thank you, God, for these shoes or for my toothbrush or whatever. But we have these, we have these things in our culture that remind us who is sovereign and who has blessed us. And a 75th anniversary is like that. We can celebrate God's goodness that we've experienced over the 75 years, and we can be thankful that we were able to participate in his redemption. So that's all part of our celebration that we um, are enjoying this evening. And we have some people who are going to reminisce and talk about how um, they've been blessed by Camp Susquehanna. And I'm actually not sure in what direction each speaker is going to take us. So I'm a little excited to see how each speaker interpreted um, their mission for the night. And our first speaker, is he on deck? Tim Bryant. Tim Bryant. Okay. Tim Bryant. Tim Bryant is um, chairman of our board of directors. He started coming to Susquehanna in, I'm guessing, 1975. And the reason I know that is because I went to college with Tim Bryant. We were on a volleyball team together. Um, I was definitely the weak link on the team, and Tim was definitely <laughs> the champion. <laughs> um, but a very, very kind teammate. <laughs> um, very patient with the rest of us. And so um, then he started coming to Camp Susqua um, that summer, and I don't think he's missed any time since then. He's been a counselor, he's been on support staff, he was a program director, chaplain, not sure. So I'll let Tim come and take it away. <clears throat> I'll have a couple notes here just so I keep myself under 20 minutes, okay? No. <clears throat> It has really been a, a privilege being a part of Camp Sasqua. As Anna was saying, it stretches back to 1975. And uh, Kelly Nolden had invited me after my freshman year at Geneva College to say, do you want to be a summer camp counselor? I said, yeah, why not? Uh, and I came here. And then for the next six out of the next eight summers, end ended up being here uh, on staff in one form or another, whether it was a program director, waterfront director, 
uh, whether it was a counselor with a, a red men and, uh, or mountain men now, uh, uh, or woodsmen. And uh, one of the things I did was camp craft as well. I, d I dealt with, well, actually we built the original eagle's nest lashing with poles with uh, uh, junior hires. Somehow we got it built and erected. Uh, also uh, with wild edible plants, who, who remembers the uh, sawdust kind of tasting birch bark bread? Yeah. It was bad. <laughs> I didn't have a grinder to make it uh, uh, small enough, but uh, th those are some fun memories and, uh, and uh, rattlesnakes do. He burned up my blender doing it. I was told I made Adam cry a couple of times. <laughs> uh, a fried rattlesnake. I mean, we just did some very interesting things back then. But it was really a, a great opportunity uh, and since then being a blast speaker and being a chaplain, and uh, it just, it's hard to leave Susquehanna. Uh, I've been on the board for 38 years, yeah. And uh, it's just, uh, one of the things I like being on the board is just come back to be, to have the godly fellowship with the people here that uh, have influenced my life so much. So the thing that stood out to me most in my time here at Susquehanna and, and continues to bring me back is just the God-centered spirit that I had here that uh, just, um, I, I'm indebted to people like uh, Chief Bob uh, Paul or uh, Ted Tripp, uh, Bob Morey, John Riesinger, and others who just really uh, just had a heart for God that helped pass that on to us as well. Um, so the first thing that was instrumental in my life is just knowing God as my Father. Creator God is my Father through, through Christ. And uh, that has been so powerful at shaping my life in so many ways over the course of my life. Way back then, we would uh, come to camp for 12 or 13 weeks in the summer, and we were pretty much isolated that uh, being in Christian community as a small group for the entire summer was so cool, uh, and, and serving together, living together. Um, back then, for you younger people, you may uh, understand this, we were so isolated, we didn't even read the newspaper. So at the end of the summer, you'd go back to school and you'd have to catch up on world and national current events because we, we just hung out here together. So that was really kind of cool. So the first thing is that just the, the warmth and the wonder that God is my father was the thing that had, God really has worked in my life and has spoken into that, my life over the, the, that time. The second thing briefly I would just say is that one of the other highlights for me is Chief Bob. Chief Bob was an interesting person. How many people uh, had met Chief Bob along the way? Yeah, well, so you know what I mean. Uh, I count Chief Bob as my spiritual father. Um, he made everyone feel special. I remember him walking around the dining hall, rubbing people's backs and talking and chatting, whether you were a camper or a counselor, he just made you feel special. I know there's so many people who would count uh, Chief Bob as a, a dear friend and mentor over the years, so I'm just deeply indebted to him. And so many others, like Chief Phil Warzicki, Chief Thunder Eagle, uh, and so many others, Raymond Palmer, that I, I'm just so thankful for the legacy that they created for us. So uh, just knowing God and having men like Chief Bob speak into my life was just very powerful over those years. So to God be the glory. Our next speaker I know pretty well. His name is Bill Dittmore. He's my brother. Um, I like to introduce him as my older brother, but alas. Um, I would also like to say that he was my partner in crime growing up here at Camp Susquehanna. But when I started thinking back over times of getting in trouble at Camp Susquehanna, he was never part of it. It was always just me. <laughs> So Bill would have been here since 1950, I won't say, seven. But that means I'm older than that. So let Bill talk about, um, I don't actually know what he's going to talk about. Go for it, Bill.
What an amazing, amazing event. Uh, when you think about 75 years, uh, God has been so good, and God has put, as Nathan would say, a bubble of protection around this place, uh, like he did when COVID, but uh, so many things could have gone wrong. But because of his love and that we would follow what we were to do as far as the vision, we were ambassadors for our Heavenly Father. We were not ambassadors for ourselves. We, at the bottom of that is God's love. God is love. And a real quick shout out, there's a book called The Greatest Thing in the World by Henry Drummond. And it's, uh, it's on, you can Google it, and it's worth the read. It takes about 40 minutes to read it, and it will do your heart good. I, uh, one of the things, I, I'm really Billy D. as soon as I come across the bridge. Uh, Kelly Nolan gave me that moniker, and I gave Kelly the Kelly the belly, Kelly belly. I believe is what, he's not here. So real quickly, uh, my first memory is flying here at camp. The older guys, when I was like maybe two or three, they would toss me around like a football, and I thought it, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I'm not sure what mom thought, and maybe she wasn't watching, but... Uh, and then uh, one other memory is, uh, I have like lots of material, some of it's scandalous. Um, and uh, some of the people here are probably reaching in their seat, but I, I'm really tough for time here, so I'll tell you one more memory. And that is the first, first time there was a search party sent out for, uh, there were three of us leading the, the girls on a stayover. On Saturdays, we would try to keep, we went up to Band Rocks. And the gate was closed, so we walked up, and some of the girls started getting blisters and stuff like that. And so we had to pick an alternate route down. So Dan Stuber said he would take the girls down over the mountain. And it was, uh, he made it down there. And uh, Mr. Neese, what was Tim, Tim Neese, I think? Tim Neese and I had to run all the way back to the vehicles, and then the vehicles were locked, and we had to break in with that, and it was like, probably two mile run down there, I, somehow we made it. Then when we got to where we figured Dan would be with the girls, it was near the bridge right above Ralston. And when we gave him the motion, here he comes out of the woods with like 20 girls. And uh, the people were just amazed that he had that many girls on a hike. And then on the way back, uh, Dave and Ann or somebody were coming to find us because we were like an hour, hour late. But you know, there are so many things that uh, camp, um, the one thing I really want to emphasize is what God has been speaking to me. Uh, I take a lot of pictures, I'm a forester, and God speaks to us in so many different ways. And I, Psalm 19, I sang it a lot, but I'm just amazed at the first five lines. The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. There are, they use no words. But God speaks to us through his creation. And um, I learn a lot, you know. I take pictures um, of the wee small things, the beauty in the smallest things around here that you walk past. It's just amazing how God uh, blesses us. And as you get older, I hope you open your eyes to the wonders, the mysteries, and the miracles that, that God provides for us. And we need to be very grateful for that, as I'm very grateful for 75 years at Susquehanna, and that I was actually born into it. Thank you very much. Dick Barrett is going to lead us in greatest life faithfulness. Um, Dick Barrett, where do I begin? <laughs> um, Dick Barrett started to stand up. The words are um, on the screen and also in your bulletin, in your program. And it's 
This is what we're celebrating um, with the 75th anniversary of Canton Sus School, Great is God's Faithfulness. speaker is Paul Tripp. Um, everybody probably knows Paul Tripp as an author, as a conference speaker. Paul first came to Susquehanna um, when he was a student at um, Reformed Episcopal Seminary in Philadelphia. He and Luella came to work at our um, college retreat, The Blast. And Paul was around at work weekends, all kinds of weekends after that, and chaplain. And everybody remembers this um, very amazing and um, erudite speaker. But I remember a Paul Tripp who was, we had a lot of fun evenings sitting around, particularly telling Tim Staver crazy stories. Um, it was a staff member camper that we had, and he also lived with trips for a while and had the most amazing stories. So I remember Paul Tripp as this, it was great evenings um, spending, spent with Paul and Luella. And then to try to put that together with this personage that we will now um, see on the screen is little, Jarring for me, but enjoy Paul Tripp. Whenever the name Camp Susqua comes up in our family, we all smile and share fond memories that we would never want to forget or give up. I remember when I was first asked to be uh, a chaplain at Camp Susqua. I didn't know the camp well. I didn't know its character and... I didn't know how we would fall in love with the spirit and the message of Camp Susquehanna. I love this philosophy of introducing children to the glory of God in creation as a means of introducing them then to the
to the glory of God as Savior. It's a beautiful, beautiful mission. And we had so many remarkable, wonderful times. Uh, met lifelong friends there. Uh, learned so much about ministry there. And so I, I am just so excited uh, that I can speak right now to you and say congratulations on 75 years of faithful gospel service. I've never, I was never at a camp before and haven't been at a camp since that has the character and the spirit of Camp Susquehanna. I recently said to my son, who's now 46, that uh, I was going to be, do, be doing something with Camp Susquehanna. And he said, oh, that's great. I love Camp Susquehanna. God bless you. May there be 75 more years. And may this be an awesome celebration, not just of the camp, but of the God that has given this camp its meaning and purpose. We love Camp Susquehanna. Whenever the name Camp Susquehanna comes up in our family, we all smile and share fond memories that we would never want to forget or give up. I remember when I was first asked to be uh, a chaplain. Armstrong, one of five Armstrongs for I should have counted before I came up. <laughs> um, and oh, yeah, I do have some memories of Carl that I won't share. I love the memory of his older brother who tried stealing a, or taking a piano from the dining hall over to <sighs> Laura Lodge one summer, <laughs> uh, much to the consternation of the director. Um, but Car Carl um, married. Rebecca, whom Rebecca Kinnear, I even remember that. Rebecca Kinnear, whom he met at Camp Susquehanna. And I also remember their wedding in New York, trying to get home in the snow. <laughs> well, thank you, Ann. I uh, actually was concerned about what things she was going to say, because she definitely had some stories she could tell that I wouldn't be super thrilled about. <laughs> um, I want to talk today about the impact of the um, You know, two weeks ago, I was at my church and we had a baptism. And two of the people, two of the people, there we go. Um, recap, I was at my church at baptism and two of the people there were talking about a camp experience. One of them was a young lady in her 20s. And she was speaking about how God had worked with her through one of the counselors when she was at camp. You see, she was born with some physical challenges. Her hands didn't work right. And the counselor at camp showed her that she was created the way God wanted her to create, to be, and she was special. And you know, she, God used her the exact same way when she became a counselor and ministered to kids. Um, and then there was another young boy who was about 12. He was actually one of the pastor kids in our church. And he grew up in a great Christian family. And when he went to camp, God used the camp experience to really convict him and bring him to a life of, of faith in God. What makes Camp Susquehanna so awesome? The obvious answer is God. Um, but God works through people. As I prepared to give this talk, I thought about all my time at camp. And 95% of my memories are about people. They're not about the facilities and things that go, go on here. Um, camp Susquehanna is definitely beautiful. But God created us to be in relationship with him and with each other. And that's really where the long-lasting impact of, Christ has been in my, of camp has been in my life, and I'm sure in many of yours. I first came to Camp Susquehanna as a Redmond. And I don't know why I did this, and I don't know why my parents let me, but I brought fireworks to Camp Susquehanna. <laughs> and that was when I first met Chief Bob. <laughs> Imagine that. Um, and uh, I remember him being very kind and considerate, and we actually ended up shooting them off here. But it, I just remember Chief Bob being very loving and caring, and that was my first memory of him. And he was a friend of mine all the way up until he passed away. Um, for me personally, Camp Susquehanna hasn't just been, a, as, as Camp Susquehanna has been a life changer for me. I spent about nine years here all summer long working at camp. And I always, and, and I always believe that, camp, that God uses camp to bring young boys and girls to him. But I also really firmly believe that God uses camp to have a huge impact 
in those older teenagers and young adults who work here like I did. Um, I know Susco had a huge impact on me. My first, summer, my first summer on staff at camp, I actually wasn't a very good worker. Um, I'd somehow missed my shifts in the kitchen or wouldn't do the trash run, and there were other things I wasn't doing. And I actually... <laughs> she remembers. <laughs> That's the story I was afraid she was going to tell. Actually, it's not that bad. But, um, so, uh, there actually were three of us that summer that were pretty, that were slackers. Um, one of them is in that room, in this room today, it's my good friend, Glenn Garrity. <laughs> we were actually such bad slackers that Chief Bob and Chief Phil Warzicki sat us down on the front porch of, of Susquehanna Lodge and said, shape up or ship out. And uh, I asked today, I asked Glenn, what are your memories of that day? And I didn't need to prompt him at all. You know, do you remember that? He was like, oh yeah, I remember that. Um, and I asked him, what do you remember about it? And he's like, you know, I remember that while Chief Bob and Phil were tough on us, they were also very loving. And that really is the, the pit, epitome of those two guys. Um, and that's one of the ways that God used an impact on my life. And God just doesn't use Camp Susquehanna to have an impact on people's physical life and how they, how they live it, but our spiritual life as well. I figure in those nine summers I was here, I was at probably 500 chapel services plus devotions, and I remember even talking about God while we were cleaning toilets here at camp. Um, and those interactions with godly people shaped me into the father and the husband that I am today. Norma Ulmer slash Davis um, once said to me, you know, Susquehanna is a great place to work because it's a great spot for young and women to serve, to learn about God, but also be crazy and have a lot of fun. And I always wanted my kids to work here. Last summer, my son did, and my, my youngest daughter, she wants to work here and be a counselor when she gets older, and I know God's gonna Woo. teach her. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, I know God's gonna um, really work a lot in her heart there. And another way Camp Susquehanna had a huge impact on me was, my, my, I, lived in, I lived in New Hampshire at the time, so I was like nine hours away when I was here. And uh, I had at least three different pa parents that, here at camp that were surrogate parents to me. The first was Andy and Elsie Lindgren. Um, they were facilities directors at one point, and they loved me enough to actually let me live with them in their house for a whole year. And uh, I, yeah, Peter's like, really, Carl? That's crazy. And then there was Chief Bob and Mrs. D. Um, I actually was going to Williamsport Area Community College for a little while, and every Friday, I didn't give them advance notice. I just showed up here at camp and expecting them to feed me dinner, feed me lunch. <laughs> And you know what Mrs. D did every time? A new plate on the table, and I look back, I think, how rude could I have been? No notice, I just showed up. And then, lastly, there was uh, um, Mark and Kathy Wishlegel. Um, they lived in Susquehanna Lodge, and I would show up in the middle of the night and go up, and there was always a spare bed up in the boys' room upstairs, and I'd just grab, climb into that, and go to sleep. They'd find me there the next morning. Um, and what crazy people would let Carl or somebody sleep in the room with their boys. So just the people here at camp really were loving to me over the years, and that made a huge impact on me throughout my entire life. And you know, Susquehanna isn't just a beautiful place. It's filled with beautiful people who seek after God. And in reality, that seeking after God is what makes them beautiful. And I want to end with one last point. You never know where the campers of today are going to be tomorrow and 20 years in the future. I was at Wycliffe Bible Translators down in Dallas, Texas, wearing my Camp Susquehanna gear because I had a lot of it. And uh, one of the missionaries came up to me and said, Susquehanna, I was there when I was a kid. So we never know where Camp Susquehanna's kids are going to be. How many of these Camp Susquehanna kids have grown up into be pastors, missionaries, teachers, and even just, or even more important, fathers, mothers, and uncles and aunts? And the experiences that I've had at Camp Susquehanna had a huge impact on my life, and I'm sure it's impacted each one of you as evidence that you're here on a Saturday night to celebrate Camp Susquehanna's 75th anniversary. So I want to thank you all for listening, and thank you for being here. I want to just say, uh, comment on something Carl said about the impact that Camp Susquehanna has on, um, what'd you say, teens, teens and young adults? Okay. Uh, sometimes I've, I've thought that the campers are just an excuse to reach the counselors. <laughs> yeah. 
the staff. Okay, next, um, this is my father's world led by Matt Foreman. I have no stories on Matt Foreman. I have met him and I've heard wonderful things about him. He's a chaplain here at Susquehanna, but no personal. But I do have personal experience with This Is My Father's World, and I recall it being um, sung chapels day after day, week after week, but mostly um, I remember singing it out in Chapel in the Pines as we worship God in his creation. So, Matt. Well, let me say briefly, since I'm a pastor of a supporting church, our, our church in Media, Pennsylvania has had connections with Susquehanna going back uh, since the start of our church 54 years ago. And so we have people who've grown up in our church who part of their testimony is... Uh, God's work in their lives through Susquehanna. My own children have been affected by Susquehanna. So this is a, a legacy that, that goes back decades. Uh, as we sing this next song, that this is a song that celebrates God's creation. But the, the last verse, I think, really um, kind of captures where the future of Susquehanna goes. The last verse says, This is my father's world, and let me never forget that though the wrong seemed off so strong... God is the ruler yet. We live in this dark world. The wrong often seems strong, but God is the ruler yet. This is my father's world. The battle is not done. Jesus who died shall be satisfied, and earth and heaven be one. Let's sing this together. This is my Father's world, and to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. This is my Father's world, I rest me in the thought of rocks and trees. Of skies and seas, his hand the wonders wrought. This is my father's world, the birds their carols raise, the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my father's. grass I hear him pass he speaks to me everywhere this is my father's world oh let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong God is the ruler yet this is shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be one this is my father's world the battle is not done Jesus who died shall be satisfied and earth and heaven be Right, we're halfway through this. Um, next up is Scotty Ringcamp. Um, Scotty was a staff member when David and I were directors. Um, I remember one time we did, okay, we do these um, drills every week at Susquehanna. Um, 
lost camper, fire drill, all those kinds of things. And Sc Scotty was supposed to be the lost camper. This was, <laughs> and, um, and like everybody who happened to be volunteering at camp or whatever um, was part of this, you know, because everybody has to gather and we, and then when we were giving the description, six foot three, <laughs> um, describing Scotty, and then when he was last seen, <laughs> 15 minutes ago, <laughs> and this volunteer's like, whoa, you really keep track of these, and six foot, th six foot three, and he's lost. So that was, um, that was Scotty, um, very good sport about the whole thing. And then, um, so Scotty was camper, and then um, counselor, and then program director, and when, Scotty joined the program committee. Um, he, seldom, he seldom offered anything to the committee. But, no, hang on. But when he did, it was like, when E.F. Hutton talks, everyone listens. And it's like, oh, wisdom is coming from Scotty. And uh, then he eventually um, became the program director of Susqua and he, and then board member. And um, my understanding is you still want to listen to Scott Rinkamp. <laughs> my memory of Anne uh, is, well, I have many of them, but the only one I really remember is when I got in trouble for uh, jumping in and out of a moving vehicle. Um, yeah, okay. So I have uh, two other memories that I planned to share tonight, and um, they're, they're interesting ones, I think. So I was around on summer staff for a long time. I started in 1998. Uh, and joined full-time staff in 2011, and then I finally left being on staff in 2016, so that's almost 20 years on staff. Um, it took me, well, in that time, I did all kinds of jobs. I was uh, a counselor and a support staff and a lifeguard and support staff director and SIT director and program director and a fill-in director. Um, and I did all of those jobs uh, for, for 14 years until they let me do the one last job on camp I had never done, and that was be in the kitchen. <laughs> and I don't know what it was, why I was not allowed in the kitchen for 14 years. Um, everybody else did it. It's, you know, everybody else is doing it, that kind of thing. Uh, my friends were in the kitchen. My people I didn't know were in the kitchen. Everybody was in the kitchen but me. Uh, and so uh, Kathy Reiner let me in the kitchen one day after 14 years. And uh, particularly by the end of the day, I uh, broke a crock pot <laughs> and burnt my finger. And, uh, but I did get that opportunity to be in the kitchen after 14 years, so it was a long time running. Yes, Kathy? And I, I firmly uh, don't remember that one. <laughs> um, she said that I poured grape juice over the pasta in the sink for dinner. <laughs> and if, grape juice stains. <laughs> so, so we had purple spaghetti. It was great. Oh, come on. Uh, everybody likes that. Um, but so that... That's, that's one of my memories. That's, that's a, uh, I think uh, I just being on staff was such a good, a good time. And being in the kitchen, of course, was the epitome of everything I did here at Camp Susquehanna. Uh, <laughs> maybe not so much. There's one thing that is slightly higher than being in the kitchen. Um, and uh, one thing led to another, and you could probably hear him over here. Uh, but I ended up meeting my wife here at Camp Susquehanna. Um, 
which is fantastic. And one thing, and now I have kids. And <laughs> uh, I don't know, Jacob's out there somewhere. He was like singing along when the song was not going on, so you could all hear him. Um, and then I have Ben and Maddie over there as well. Ben's waving because he's so excited to be here tonight. And um, I'm very excited f for 75 years because hopefully that means in a few more years it'll still be here for them to come as well. Um, and then hopefully a few more years later it'll be here for them to be on staff for hopefully 20 summers like I did uh, because that means they're not going far away from us, they'll just be locally because we're local. Uh, and second of all, being on staff, at least to me, was far, um, had far more of an effect on my soul and my faith in Christ than being a camper ever did. So thank you very much and uh, have a great rest of the night. So. <laughs> Next, we have Rachel Legrand. I don't know a lot about Rachel. Um, I do know she's second generation Susquehanna. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Third? Oh, wow. Okay. I mean, I'm only second generation. <laughs> um, so. Rachel, um, this was the first summer, last summer was the first summer that Rachel has not been here in how many years? 11 years. And she's been um, counselor and program, girls program director. And coming, uh, that's, I can't tell you what a blessing that would be to have a program director return that many times. <laughs> I know. If any of you were here at the Susquehanna Banquet, you heard of my distress trying to find a girls camp director one year. But then God blessed amazingly. But Rachel. I uh, got a call from Kelly Nolden back in the spring, and he was like, we want you to come speak. And I teach in Georgia. So I was thinking, okay, how can I make this work? So I took off work and flew up here to be here tonight, and I am just so thankful to be here, yeah. It's a good place to be. My students cried a little bit when I told them I was gonna miss two days, but they'll be okay, it'll be good. Um, like was mentioned, I've had the opportunity to work at camp for 11 summers. I came for the first time as a camper in 2004 and fell in love. My parents drove us up from Charlotte, North Carolina, and then we just kept coming, and then kept coming back on staff. My last four summers, I served as girls program director, and that's probably my favorite role on camp of all of them. But as I was flying up on Thursday evening, I wrote words so that I kind of knew what I was gonna say to you this evening. So when I think of camp, two ideas in particular come to mind, and that's the idea of community and the idea of service. Over my years at camp, I've had the opportunity to build relationships that will truly last a lifetime. Uh, these friendships provided support while I was here working at camp and have continued to have an impact even after summers have finished. Then service is another crucial element here of camp's ministry. We're all familiar with the idea as a staff member, one of your main purposes is displaying Christ's love through your service and work here at camp. Over my years, I've seen fellow staffers be the hands and feet of Jesus to campers and to other staff around them. Uh, from taking time to clean another counselor's stew pot when you're on your off period, to loaning a camper your last dry sweatshirt for the week, um, to running around camp and tying down other counselor's tents when you hear the thunder rumbling and you see the rain coming, to stopping what you're doing to sit and listen to a camper or another staff member that just needs someone to listen to them and to pray with them. These and so many other acts of intentional service are what help and shape and form the unique community that happens here at Susquehanna. And we get the opportunity then to help the campers and staff experience their creator as we serve them here at camp. 
I was told to share a favorite story, and I've experienced lots of things over my years, but there's this one summer that stands out in particular. A lot of my favorite moments have to do with all of camp coming together. Moments like Chapel in the Pines, meals, all camp bonfires in recent summers, Friday evenings around the pond in girls camp, and theme dinners. Uh, this one particular year, it often rains in girls camp. It's a pretty understood thing that it's probably gonna rain on a stew night, so you learn how to build a fire in the rain. You expect it to happen. Well, summer 2018, it started raining and it never stopped. <laughs> um, the pond overflowed into the athletic field. The creek was the highest I've ever seen it and it was survivor week. And I remember looking at the counselors and saying, do you want to do the mud crawl or should we change the activity because your campers have been wet and muddy all week long? They wanted to do the mud crawl. So that theme dinner night, I remember it was me and Mike Maiosi, and I don't remember if Peter Swift was a part of it as well. Yeah, we were out of the mud crawl, sent them all through, and then this retention pond somehow happened beside the actual pond from the overflow, and we got in it because we were that muddy. So there were rubber duckies and Mike Maiosi and Peter and I and campers, and they had an absolute blast. And those counselors embraced the cold and the wet and the mud so that they could give these campers this experience experience at camp so they could be a part of our community. So I am just so thankful uh, for my summers at camp and all the memories that have been formed and relationships built here in this place. So thanks, y'all. Was anyone surprised at hearing about parents that drove her all the way up from Charlotte, North Carolina to Camp Susquehanna? Um, there was a time, and I don't know if it's still like this, where I used to wonder whether we shouldn't have a bus from North Carolina. We had so many campers come from there. The Wallaces, I'm thinking, um, oh, now I'm, I, I, I was naming them all in my head before I got up on the platform here. But so, oh, Gordons. So anyways, quite a few families from North Carolina. But her, her um, mother had when she came, she came from Rochester, New York? Yep. Yes, so she was already used to that. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, Kim Susquehanna brings them in from all around. Okay, next is Ethan Smith. Um, there's a familiar theme to what we're doing here tonight. How many have, how many um, of these speakers met their wives here at Kim Susquehanna? Dick Barrett. Carl Armstrong, Scotty Ringcamp, and now Ethan Smith. <laughs> hey, everybody. Oh, that's weird. I've got my voice coming in my ear. Hold on. Uh, I've been working the camera and the live stream and stuff over here, so I was listening with a slight delay. Um, so, uh, we'll get a little man, bit vulnerable with you guys. Uh, I've been listening to each of these, these testimonials up here and thinking, oh wow, yeah, I should talk about that story that's kind of like that. Or no, I was going to talk about that, but then they talked about something like that, so I'm not going to talk about that. I want to be unique. Um, but that just goes to show you just how universal a lot of these, these great experiences and these great uh, things that have helped people to grow are. Uh, you can't work on staff here for any amount of time without experiencing uh, strong community together. You can't do it without experiencing just like, goofy fun. Uh, and like, that's pretty awesome. Um, so I'll give a, an example of some, uh, some great community and some goofy fun uh, and, and a little bit of danger. Um, <laughs> So, my first summer as a counselor was uh, 2016, uh, which is relatively recent compared to some people uh, and relatively ancient compared to others. Um, but anyway, end of my first boys camp as a counselor, uh, Seth Manser was the pro boys program director and he got a, a bunch of the guys together after all the campers left and said, hey, you guys want to go up lookout? And that's that mountain over there in case you didn't know. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. Let's do it. And so we got some hot dogs and water and sleeping stuff and a pineapple and uh, we all went up the mountain and it was pretty great. Um, got up there, set up hammocks and 
sat around the campfire talking about memories and uh, what we had learned and uh, different campers and experiences with them and just passed the pineapple around. We had a good time. Um, turns out um, we didn't look at a weather forecast before going up. Uh, and it, it was the beginning of girls camp. So, you know, <laughs> had to start raining eventually. So we're watching these storm clouds roll in from the, the rock and like, oh, I wonder if it's going to rain tonight. <laughs> and uh, there, were, there were a couple Canadians who were smart and went down the, the mountain before that. Um, they knew to fear the inclement weather. Um, but, you know, the rest of us, we were going to tough it out. Like, eh, if we get wet, if we get, we get wet, that's fine. Um, and it was pr pretty cool watching it, just like raining over on the other hills. Finally go to bed. Uh, people are passed out on the rock. I go to my hammock around like 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I was off contract. Uh, <laughs> and... Curfew still applies. <laughs> I'm not even on, on Kip property. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I don't work here anymore. <laughs> you can't fire me. Uh, anyway, I wake up around 2 a.m. to just deafening thunder and lightning, lightning up the entire area. I could see without a flashlight. Like, people are yelling at me to get up. We got to get out of here. Leave your stuff. We'll come back for it. And we, uh, we hightail it down the mountain. I grab my backpack. I grab my pants, and we go. <laughs> And my shirt, yeah. Didn't leave that up there, because it was girls camp at the bottom of the hill. Uh, and as we're going down the hill, it's pouring, we're all soaked through, uh, it's muddy, it's dark. I lost my flashlight on the way up somehow. Um, and I got, we, we get about to like three quarters of the way down, it stopped raining, it's all, it's all good now. Uh, we're, we're zombie marching down the hill. Finally get down to the bottom, figure I should put my pants on now. Uh, and we end up walking across girls camp in the middle of the night. There were some people going back and forth to the bathroom. I don't hope they didn't see us because we, uh, we were covered in mud and just like shambling over to the dining hall where we uh, used the old showers in the men's bathroom. First and only time that I've ever used those. And it was great that one night only. Uh, yeah, so we collapse in the basement. I fall asleep in the carpet ball table. We wake up to someone in from the kitchen just turning on the light, turning it back off and running away. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it was pretty great. Uh, but the point of all that story, to bring it back to a deeper meaning, is you don't get that kind of shared experience many other places. Um, like, yeah, you, you have fun with your friends, but you don't have that kind of fun with your friends. <laughs> uh, any other places. And uh, the, the relationship and the community that we had built up uh, in the weeks leading up to then, that was uh, what made it such a special memory in my mind. Um, so I think that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Okay, um, next, Joey Reese will be leading 10,000 Reasons. Um, Joey was one of three Reeses that were on staff when I was, when my husband and I were directors. Um, I have no embarrassing stories to tell on <laughs> Joey. Now, maybe her brother, Johnny but not on Joey or her sister, Becky. Um, I also, um, Joey's very special to me. Um, when my husband was sick, um, <sighs> thought I was gonna be able to do this. Um, we went through a lot of trauma and he was in remission for a while and we, I knew it wasn't necessarily forever 
But we had been through so much, and God had been so good to us that we had a praise service um, for God's goodness. And I remember jo I asked Joey to come and play the piano for that. And then she also did for my husband's funeral. And Joey has a special place in my heart. So, Joey. <laughs> taller than Joey. <laughs> okay. Um, next up is Claire Fisher. Um, I talked about this theme of meeting spouses at Susquehanna. It hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but, I don't think 
but. <laughs> no, no, there is a but. Her parents met at Susquehanna. <laughs> Um, George and Sue met oh, here yeah. at Susquehanna. Yes. <laughs> How could you forget that? <laughs> okay. Um, I met, I'm, I'm sure I met Claire when she was a kid coming to family camp. But then um, when she was on staff for Camp Susquehanna, I was her prayer partner her first summer. So that's when I got to, um, then really Claire became a person to me. <laughs> um, and I do know this about Claire. She just graduated from Grove City College. So yeah, I've actually been aware of um, Claire over the years because um, Sue, her parents are somebody that I've, are people that I've always just and friends, friends. Yeah. So, all right, Claire, what do you have for us? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> that's just, I'm just going to stay like that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Um, uh. <laughs> I. So 11 years ago, I had the absolute joy of talking about my favorite place on earth uh, at a legacy banquet. And now I'm back 11 years later, uh, sharing memories um, about Camp Sasqua. How, you know, how cool is that? Um, just in that little sentence, God's faithfulness um, to me and through this camp. Um, so I think I'm going to talk about my experience of almost burning down Chapel in the Pines. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to tell you at some point. <laughs> so, I had the distinct privilege of being the girls' sit director in 2021. Um, and part of our job is to lead all of camp from the pavilion to wherever opening ceremonies takes place. Uh, with torches, that's key. <laughs> I, who know, like who who remembers these tiki torches? Who has an experience with? Yeah, they're awful. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, um, this specific week it was taking place in far, far fields, which is past a bunch of fields named with a various combination of near and far. Um, it was going great. We were laughing. We were chatting. We were so excited for the start of the new week. Um, but then ahead of me in the line, I see this ball of fire drop to the ground. And my first thought is, oh no. <laughs> my second thought is, water. So I run, I run, I open up my water bottle, I dump the contents of it on the ground, in, on the flame. But unfortunately, it has kerosene mixed in with it. So yeah, it doesn't go out with just water. It needs to be suffocated. A wise person, Miss Mary Foreman, suggests we get sand. And I think to myself, oh, I know of a sand pit. So I book it. I'm running back to like near far fields, far, far near far fields, uh, you know. OK. And my mind is racing. I'm thinking, what if my what if Chapel in the Pines burns down? You know, what if the campers catch on fire? We, are my sits OK? You know, that first and foremost, are my sits OK? And I'm going through this bend. Um, there's Creekside area or Hawk area on my right, and the, the pond is on my left. And all of a sudden, I look up, and I see these huge mountains and the dark outline they have. It's overwhelming, and it's contrasted with these brilliant, bright stars and the moon. And my worried thoughts quickly vanish, and the question of who made these filled my head. Who holds these in his hands and who holds me in his hands? And as I was shoveling sand <laughs> from you know, a, a, a sand pit I've, I've grown up in many hours <laughs> digging to China or trying to, but as I was shoveling this sand, um, Psalm 46 came to mind. Um, <laughs> that's no joke. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a joke. And it's, it says, 
God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way, though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea, though chapel and the pines is, might be burning down. <laughs> and I was just struck by this piece. So, you will hopefully worship in it tomorrow. You know that Chapel in the Pines is not burned down. I, I, we were able to put out the fire. We put some sand on it. Pine Sight 2020, there was sand 30 feet from me at Creekside. <laughs> but, but I got in my exercise, and I, I would never trade that for the world because I learned this lesson that I, I, I've carried with me through this, this year, and I think it's so applicable. These are the lessons that you learn at camp. When, when would I ever, ever again, maybe have the thought of burning down a forest and then realize, no, my God is in control of that. <laughs> um, and although these stories are great to tell, these grand tales, I think we all agree that our favorite moments of Camp Susquehanna are the little ones in between the morning fog on the mountains and the dying embers at the night and the people that we share it with. Um, I think the biggest takeaway I've gotten from Camp Susquehanna is that my life is not my own. And it is so much better um, lived in service to Christ. And um, so, while I have been blessed with so many stories, so many memories, um, what brings me more joy is when campers come up to me and say, Miss Claire, is it true that every time I go to God, I'm forgiven again and again? Or... Nurse Norma knows this, when a girl who did not speak the first day of camp runs to her mom with a huge smile and is, we need to come back next year! <laughs> or just the transforming power that God has in a group. And it can take place over four days or a day. Um, the Hawks, I was, I was the Hawk AC this last summer, and at, we started off with saying our thankfuls in the beginning of the week. And they were great thankfuls, but it was parents or pets or the weather and at the end of the week they always shared I am so thankful I made a new friend that is really hard for me I'm so thankful that this group opened up and bonded it was so encouraging and I'm so thankful that I learned about my savior Christ that is the best thing we can do and I would be a fool if I thought that it had anything to do with me but it is all through Christ and Camp is full of imperfect people. But that just so much better displays God's power and faithfulness and love towards this camp that it's, he's led us this far, 75 years. Um, so in light of that, in light of his faithfulness and his goodness and his love, um, let us not tire of doing good. So I love this camp. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>
has been a blessing to Susquehanna um, as, as a camp director and then since he left um, and my son became director, but Mike has continued to use his um, gifts in many ways um, that blesses Camp Susquehanna. And one of the ways is we, we're going to hear from him right now from Mexico. Years of uh, the ministry of camp. I am all the way here in uh, southern Mexico right now with uh, all these people behind me uh, studying the Word of God. Uh, by the way, this is Chief Mike, and uh, it's just a just want to say uh, how much I praise the Lord uh, for Camp Susco for the ministry there, the impact that it's having that it's had for 75 years uh, on children, especially, but also young adults and families. Uh, specifically with the gospel. Uh, I just praise the Lord for that. And, and honestly, like our memories from serving there uh, are some of the best that we've ever had in ministry. And so uh, I just want to greet all of you and just say praise the Lord. Uh, and I wish I could be there with you. Uh, but the Lord has me here right now with all these pastors and leaders training them how to study the Bible. So uh, I'm sorry I can't be there, uh, but I just uh, want you to know I'm there in spirit and uh, so thankful for the ministry of Camp Susquehanna uh, for all these years. Praise the Lord. Hello, everybody at uh, Camp Susquehanna, who I know you're just loving being there, celebrating 75 years of uh, the Okay, reminiscing aside, um, we are going to <clears throat> enjoy a message um, coming from Mike Cantine. Mike Cantine, I don't know how many times Mike Cantine has been the chaplain at Camp Susquehanna. Um, and very famous for his little bag sermons. I'm not sure if he's doing that tonight. But I, I have a very special memory of Mike, besides all kinds of personal memories. Um, one time, we had a retreat in the winter. It was a winter retreat for middle schoolers. And we had quite a blizzard or snowstorm. And every single camper, no matter what state they were living in, showed up. The food truck did not show up. <laughs> the speaker did not show up. <laughs> um, and of course, an emergency call to Mike Cantine. And he's like, I'll be right there. And Mike came up to um, help us out with that retreat. And that's the story of Mike Cantine, um, a humble servant and always a servant. So, Mike, your turn. I'm very glad to have the opportunity to open the Word of God today. And we're turning a ver to a verse that's very well known by many who know of the camp since it was so important to Bill Didmar. I'd like to read from Revelation chapter 4 uh, and verses uh, 11 and 12. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Let's pray. 
We know, Lord, that you have promised that your word would not return into your void, but would accomplish the thing whereto you sent it. And so our special prayer tonight is that you will send it forth. Lord, speak to us tonight. Open our minds and hearts to hear. Teach us and help us. You've made us very thankful with all the things we've heard tonight. We thank you for your word, and we pray that it may bless our hearts as we think about it tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Snapshots and video clips. Last night we saw a wonderful documentary about Camp Suspa. And in 31 minutes, it covered 75 years of ministry at Camp Suspa with snapshots and video clips. And one of the things that I thought with regard to it, and with regard to the text we're looking at tonight, is that there are many ways in which the book of Revelation is filled with snapshots and video clips. In fact, I'd suggest the passage we're looking at, this particular passage, has some interesting snapshots and some interesting video clips, which we'd like to look at. And perhaps the very pattern will be evident when you read the book of Revelation in other ways. Amazing how God uses these. For instance, in the passage it here, it says, it has a snapshot of some amazing living creatures. Earlier in the chapter, it describes them, and we see that they're seraphim. And we see that these are the creatures that were before Isaiah. When, in the year the King Isaiah died, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And remember the flying creatures that were there. Those creatures are here in this text. 700 years before Christ, these glorious creatures were in the presence of God praising him. And 2,700 years later, they yet praise and honor him. And they're not very old creatures trying to operate in extreme age. They haven't changed at all. They're as glorious as Gabriel was. Gabriel went to visit Daniel 600 years before Christ. And he came to visit Mary. And he wasn't an old decrepit angel. Because there was no change. He dwells somehow in the place without time. And so it's a glorious picture. And so this begins with a snapshot of a glorious creature that if you think about it, you can't really understand it. If you try to picture it, it doesn't, even though the description is earlier in the passage, you can't fully put it together. I remember Dave Kotzko's description in a song. Creatures that will dazzle your eyes being dazzled by him. And he was one of, these are, this is a creature that would dazzle your eyes, being dazzled by him. This is the throne room of God, and it's a beautiful and amazing picture. Well, there's a snapshot from the throne room of God. But then it speaks of the 24 elders who fall down before him, who sits upon the throne. I appreciate so much that image of 24 elders. I'm convinced what God is picturing there is the complete church. Every, everyone there, all accounted for. The 24 elders, they're representing all the people of God in every place. All together, all accounted for, and all under direct control and protection from God. The 24 elders in the very presence of God represent all the people of God. And that reminds us wonderfully that of the words of Jesus who said that of those that God had given him, he would lose nothing. Every one that comes to the Lord Jesus Christ will one day be in the presence of the Lord Jesus, be gathered with the people of God. Here's the complete, the complete family of God, gathered in the presence of God. There's wonderful creatures that will dazzle your eyes, and there's a multitude that no man can number, of those that have come to the Lord Jesus Christ and gather in that place to bring praise and honor to the Lamb. It's interesting the things they say. They say, you are worthy 
our Lord and God, to receive glory, etc. You are worthy, our Lord and God. You know, that's a significant statement. Here's the people. The redeemed of the Lord, those that have trusted in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, those that have been born again by the Spirit, gathered in that great company, that company you long to be part of in that great day. We know that the people of God are scattered. We always think of them as scattered. But there's a day when they'll all be gathered and not one be lost. And their song will be, you are worthy, our Lord and God. You know, I think that our Lord and God would not have occurred to the seraphim. Of course it's his Lord. He never was in a place where it wasn't his Lord. But for those that are redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will be very aware and thankful that this is our Lord and God. Because each of us will remember that we lived a time when we were without, without, hope, without God and without hope in the world. When we were very far from God. That we come from a redeemed community, but we come from a people who all like sheep have gone astray, everyone turning to his own way, in whom there was no good at all. Paul himself could say that in my flesh there is no good thing. We are people without merit, and God was pleased to have mercy upon us. And God didn't want us to perish. And God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to live the life that we couldn't live. And God sent the Lord Jesus Christ to the cross to bear the penalty of our sin. A penalty that it would take us eternity to bear. Jesus Christ came from that. And because he did that, we are the children of God. And we come in a special way and say, you are worthy, our Lord and our God. And if you're a Christian tonight, if you're born again by the Spirit, if your heart has been quickened with a love for Jesus Christ, if you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear Son, if you're a born-again Christian tonight, you'll stand before God one day in the rig company with everyone there, all together, all praising God together, and will say, you are worthy, our Lord and our God. What a wonderful picture as you see the gathered people of God acknowledging the worthiness of our Lord and our God. The song that they sing is a refrain that continues in heaven. If you look to the next chapter, you'll find that again it says, to him who sits on the throne, to the Lamb, it be praise, honor, glory, and power forever and ever. And that's the theme here, praise, praise, glory, power, and honor. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. There's a song of heaven, a refrain that comes again and again. When you get to heaven to sing praises of God, you will join in with the praise that has been going on for a very long time. And so this theme repeats again and again. But I wonder it is, if it is those who have lived upon the earth and have known what it is to see the wonder of the creation of God in the way it's displayed on the earth, if they have not a special ability to, to, say, to speak of God as created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. I wonder if there's not a special way in which a person, who, a human being, appreciates the creation of God because there's such an amazing display of it before us. And it's not that we're looking just in the large, the large distance and seeing the wonder and the spinning of the planets and the stars. But we're watching all around us in the change of seasons and all the things that are happening. We're seeing the evidence of the wonderful, the wonderful creative power of God. And men come here, boys, boys and girls come here and experience their creator in a special way. I wonder if that's not another aspect of the glory of worshiping God in that day. When we say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they are, were created and have their being. I think perhaps one of the privileges of human beings is that they have seen the particular way in which the wonderful creative power of God is displayed all around them. The very thing that people feel when they see the beauty of Camp Susquehanna 
and the very thing we lift the, the vision of kids to see, to experience their creator. Well, this is the passage from God's word, and it, it does have glorious things beyond our understanding and appreciation. It's got a kind of thankfulness to God that a human being who's been saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ can lift to God in a way no other created being can. And it's got a kind of appreciation of the beauty of God's creation that is a very special kind of thing that human beings experience. And it seems that these things, from this verse, had a powerful influence on Bob Dittmar. I was given this verse to preach because this was important to Bob Dittmar. He saw something of that, perhaps things in snapshots, perhaps in, in video clips. There were pictures that came to his mind. One of the video clips that I didn't mention here is the fact that these people, these ones who are redeemed, washed in the blood of Christ, having God as their God, bring their crowns and cast them before the king. Now there's an action in that that almost makes it have to be a video clip, while they bring their crowns and cast them before the feet of, of God in their worship. That's an image that always is a blessing when we think of it, casting down our golden crowns at the, at the Savior's feet. Well, that picture's there. Some of those things triggered in Bob Detmar's mind. How did they come? Maybe simply as snapshots, as a video clip giving a sense of, of the wonder and the, and the response to God that moved him to look at the world around him, to develop a vision for bringing people to experience the beauty of God's creation and that it might be a means, the beauty of God's creation, the preaching of God's word, would bring a me be a means of bringing young people to a knowledge, a true knowledge of God, so they could say, you are worthy, our Lord and our God. And indeed, his vision has been multiplied and sustained for all these years. The vision of looking at the glory of God's creation and coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our God. And that's a question that I ought to throw out to you. Do you know this God is your God? Is he your God? You know, you could be a Susquehanna family and still not part of the family of God. There's enough of beauty and wonderful things here that a person could have a very good time here, but yet fall short of a real knowledge of God. A person becomes a child of God by recognizing their sin, by recognizing their need of God, by turning from their own self-life to serve and honor God. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. One can wonderfully enjoy the happiness of Susqua without actually dying to self and living for God. It's possible to enjoy the beauty here and not come to the end for which this camp exists, knowing and loving Jesus Christ. Have you come to know him as a reality? Have you been born again by the Spirit of God? Have your eyes been opened to the reality of your own sin and your unworthiness in the presence of God? And have your eyes been opened to the glory of God in the face of Christ? Have you come to believe that the one that lived the perfect life you couldn't live and died upon the cross died for you, and believing on him you have life. It's wonderful to be excited and to appreciate the fun and the wonder of Camp Suspa. But, Paul, but, but um, Bob Dittmar did not dedicate his life to give people fun. He dedicated his life that by God's grace, his being, he might be used of God to help young people to see the wonder of who God is and then hear the word of God, and in this wonderful context, be lifted to the point of actually bowing before the throne of God and being able to say from the heart, you are worthy, my Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will 
they were created and have their being. Have you come to Jesus? Have you turned from your sin? Have you surrendered your own life? Have you bowed to him? Do the hymns like, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. Does that resonate in your heart? Because by God's grace, God opened your eyes to see. And by God's grace, he showed you your need of Jesus. And by God's grace, you were transformed. And you were transformed, tran translated from the kingdom of darkness to light. Is that so for you? Bob would want me to charge you and to appeal to you. Because his concern was not simply that you have a wonderful time of fellowship with people. It's a wonderful time. But his real concern is that boys and girls, men and women, would come to truly bow before the Lord Jesus Christ and worship him. And to one day be in the wonderful presence of beings that would dazzle our eyes, being dazzled by him. Ourself acknowledging the goodness and the grace of God. Casting our golden crowns at his feet and worshiping and blessing him. May God cause the beauty and the wonder of the things around us, each time we see it, to lift our hearts above the beauty of creation to the uncreated one who sits upon the throne and see the beauty and the glory of him. May God enable us by his grace to live the vision that Bob, Bob Dittmar had that we might be a fruit of what he prayed for and labored for all these years. Many joined with him because they caught something of that vision too. It's a glorious vision. And it will be a wonderful day when all are present and accounted for. And we stand before the throne saying, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Let's pray. Our great God, we do thank you for the glimpses, the snapshots, and the, the video links that you give us that we might behold you. Lord, thank you for the way in which you moved Bob Dittmar's heart to dedicate his life to help people come to the experience of knowing you. Lord, who, he saw the wonder of the world around him and his own heart rejoiced in you. And he longed that that might be a means in other people's lives to look beyond the beauty of this world to the beauty of Jesus. Lord, help us all to look to the beauty of Jesus. And we thank you for the privilege, even tonight, to think about your word together. Worthy, worthy is our God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Mike painted a picture of what it will be to praise God with full hearts and in heaven in our without um, our brokenness, without our sin. But we can still praise, and even in those, um, those same words, as we sing tonight. Um, Dave Vest is going to be leading us in this hymn. Um, Dave is the program director um, here at Camp Susquehanna, the full-time program director. A um, little word about Dave Vest. He started in the winter of, he started here in the winter of 2020. So his first summer at Camp Susquehanna, there was no Camp Susquehanna. <laughs> so it required all the creativity that he could, that he never imagined he would have to summon for that year. So thank you, Dave. Let's worship God together.
created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created for thou art worthy, O Lord. Thou art worthy. Amen. You may have a seat. Do you have anything closing At this time, I'm going to invite Davis up. His mom doesn't want to introduce him, apparently. <laughs> Uh, Dave, I, I really, uh, oh, just, Dave, I really appreciate uh, that you kind of broke the tone of the room there, because I'm about to break the tone of the room, because I get to do the housekeeping announcements, so that we can do another closing song, and then we'll end on like a you know nice cheery note. Um, well, first, before I go any further, can uh, can we give a round of applause for uh, Peter's mom for emceeing this evening? Sorry, sorry, I forgot about the camera again. Sorry, okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I'm going to hit up some housekeeping announcements, and I really apologize. They just need to be done. Um, it's dark outside. Once you all leave here, you know, it's hard to find people, especially, um, like, volunteers. Who, volunteers, I apologize. Your night's not over. We have a lot of tables in the pavilion and a lot of breakfast to serve in the dining hall tomorrow morning. So, we're gonna do some work. Uh, so, in a moment, uh, you guys have candles, that's great. Don't start lighting them yet. I'm gonna go for a long time. I've got a microphone, and I don't want you to burn yourselves. Um, in a moment, I'm gonna divide you all up into girls camp areas. Um, we've got a great tradition here at Susquehua where the week ends with circling the pond lighting candles and singing songs, we're not going to go around the pond. We are going to go around our tables. Um, and I'll break you into areas, assign you a song, assign a leader to that area. Uh, leaders who have been pre-established by Peter, just pay attention because I'm going to be telling you where to go soon, okay? But here's the good stuff, the good announcements. Um, after the candlelight singing, there's going to be a fire breaking out over in the main campfire area next to us. Um, also a couple little satellite fires um, and a smorgasbord as well. A smorgasbord of s'mores is going to be going on out there. Um, so if you've got some young children, I know it's been a long day for them. Uh, they're ready for bed, so put some s'mores inside of them and then go take them to bed. <laughs> There's some sort of scientific research that, about like sugar being a placebo with bedtime, whatever. Um, do some real-time research yourselves. So uh, look out for the fire. Once you see a fire lit and some lanterns, that's a good sign that the fire is probably ready for some s'more poking and roasting. Um, please just, you know, if you have children, consider loosely supervising them during that activity. Uh, some staff will be manning it. 
and woman in it, but uh, I'm sure they would be grateful for your assistance as well. All right, so can I walk in front of the speakers or is it gonna be feedback? Okay, well, no, I... You guys are doing good work, but let's try to make it slightly quicker work. And go ahead and stand. Let's stand. And honestly, I made a pretty big deal about those housekeeping announcements, and then I didn't make them. <laughs> but this is good, because now it has to be really, really fast, so you all don't, all don't burn yourselves. In a moment, in a moment, the lights are going to turn off. In a moment. Because I also haven't told how all of it works yet. I, I've never been a girls program director. Uh, that should be obvious by how poorly I'm doing this. All right, so housekeeping announcements. All volunteers, after we're done with the candlelight thing, uh, sing, <laughs> sorry, the candlelight singing, please come forward, rush me here at the stage. Uh, we, got, we got to do some work. If you feel like, boy, tonight I feel like moving some tables, but I wasn't like a volunteer, well, you're now voluntold. Help us move some tables. At the very least, everyone, you know, take your uh, cups or your plates, whatever, and your plastic bottles to the nearest appropriate receptacle. So the, the water bottles go in the recycling cans, everything else in the garbage cans. All right, so we're going to have, I'm going to have Chief John start singing in a moment once the lights goes down. Once the J area is, do J area is done, Doves, you guys will sing. Once they're done, Hawks, you sing. And then Chief Doug will lead everybody in holy, holy, holy. And then we're just going to start from this corner here. Chief Peter is going to blow out his candle. And we're just going to have a wave 
of candles being blown out. And then we're gonna have a moment of absolute silence. And then the lights are gonna come back on. We're gonna have a good time again. Oh, we're still having, always having, oh my goodness. I should not have this. Turn the lights off, turn the lights off.
Praise God. Breakfast is at 8.30 tomorrow. Uh, you can leave your candles on your tables. Please don't throw them away. Feel free to take your trash with you. Campfire will be starting soon.